Well, I'm delighted to be with you this morning and continue uh, in our summer theme of Are We There Yet? And it may not look like it, but once upon a time, in a galaxy far, far away, I suppose, I was a runner. And uh, I used to uh, be able to go out and run four or five miles, sometimes further than that, and not think much about it. It's interesting, uh, those of us that have been runners at one point in time know that there's a, a place where you get into a, a rhythm, they call it. And uh, you can be running, and running fairly hard, depends on what kind of shape you're in, but uh, it's, almost like you, it's almost like you forget that you're doing it. Now, you don't actually forget, you're conscious, but it's, it's that you've done it for so long and so often, and well, there's just, there's a rhythm to it. People sometimes describe that as the runner's high, and it can be euphoric over, although I've, I've always found that to be a bit overselling the experience. <laughs> but, but I want to talk to you today about life rhythms, spiritual rhythms, the, the, the rhythm of the Sabbath, and how that fits into this theme uh, that we were talking about this summer of, you know, are we there yet? The, the spiritual theme, themes uh, 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 in life, the, the religious concepts that it seems like we're just never done with. Or maybe we always have questions about. And in this case today, it's, it's, it's the concept of the, the Sabbath and how it encapsulates, well, much of what I talked to, to you about a couple weeks ago. And for those of you that weren't here, uh, a couple weeks ago, I, I spoke about spiritual disciplines, uh, which is a fancy way, or maybe a, maybe a not-so-pleasant way, depending on our experience with the Word, of describing practices of the faith, religious practices. John Wesley called them the means of grace, the means by which we experience God's grace. The, these spiritual practices wherein we are promised by God that God meets us in these things. That this is, this is how our faith moves from something that is abstract or conceptual into something that is practical and actual. Weekly worship, daily devotions, generous giving, purposeful prayer, humble and joy-filled serving. You know, faith sharing readily, readily faith sharing, uh, 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 living simply. Life in small groups, fasting, journaling, meditating, uh, uh, pilgrimages or, or, or mission trips or, or, or journaling. or We talked about all these things. And, and today it's almost like part two of that particular message. Because Sabbath is a weekly way of resetting and restarting our life rhythms based on our spiritual practices. Sabbath, now that word literally means seven. Sabbath means seventh, and uh, it, it comes from the idea that, that God rested on the seventh day, God created uh, the world and, and rested on the seventh day, and, and we understand that a day to God is like a thousand years to us, and so this is highly uh, hyperbolic in, 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 in speech here, and, and, and also symbolic because we also know that God does not grow tired and weary, and so we must look for deeper meanings. It's interesting, it's one of the commandments, it's the fourth commandment, actually, to honor the Sabbath, to keep it holy. It takes up one-third of the words in both places where you find the Ten Commandments, in Exodus and then in Deuteronomy. It takes up one-third of the words that describe all the Ten Commandments, and most of us live, or an awful lot of Christians live, as if it doesn't exist at all. Now, I say that we also live in a place in the country where we, we have a lot of folks that take their faith very seriously as Christians and, and in so are very deliberate about Sabbath. In fact, there are Seventh-day Adventist friends. There are a whole lot of them around here. And they're so serious about the Sabbath as they, they decide they're just going to worship and, and do everything they're going to do as Christians on the Hebrew, the Jewish Sabbath day, which is, of course, Saturday. Now, you and I, we worship on on Sunday mornings because it was on the first day of the week that they went to the tomb and found it empty. And early on, the Christians practiced that, that, that they gathered on the first day of the week in honor of the resurrection. So that's why we, we worship on Sunday mornings. And, and we Christians actually don't consider Sunday, and it, 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 theologically, it's not the seventh day. We consider it the eighth day. And that's a sermon for another time. But eight is the sermon or the number of resurrection. And 
But all this to say that the Sabbath is, 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 for many of us, it's a, it's a concept that we hear about or we have talked about, or, but we often don't take it seriously. One of two questions that I think will be very important in this next uh, few decades for church-going Christians is not the question to the outsiders whether or not people believe in God, but it's, do you believe in God's church? I think that's the evangelical question of this century. And along with this is, I'm glad you believe in God, but do you believe in God's Sabbath? That's a good question. You say you believe in God, good, but do you believe in God's Sabbath? Keep the Sabbath day, we read in Isaiah. Keep it holy. Don't pursue your own interests on that day. But enjoy, I love that. Enjoy the Sabbath. And speak of it with delight. As the Lord's holy day, that is set aside day. Uh, holy is a word that, that means God's grace, God's presence, God's power goes through whatever that is holy. We say holy Bible, you see. It's the holy book. It's the book through which the power presence of God somehow gets through to me. The holy day, the day in which God's presence and power gets through to me. See that? Honor the Sabbath in everything you do, everything you do on that day. And don't follow your own desires or, or talk idly. You know, I, I love when people get into the habit of worshiping. Uh, and, and what I mean, and I'm going to ask some of you to remember back, back when you started that habit. Maybe you've always had the habit. Maybe you, maybe you came to worship when you were a little child and you've never left. But a lot of us have the experience, even if that was our story, that there was a time in our life when we got away from it. And if you can think about that, and when you came back, I love it when people come back. Or I love it when people start. And, and it's not right away because, you know, you know, they maybe have a good experience the first time, second time, whatever. And, and then, then they kind of, you know, you have to kind of make yourself go. But at some point, at some point, people get into a rhythm. And it starts affecting, and it starts affecting us in ways that, that we realize and some ways we don't realize. Until we miss. And I love this. I love it when people come up and talk to me about it. You know, I had lots of people that never went to church before in the previous church that I, I served and started. And, and, and the surprise, the surprise in their faces and in their own lives when they would confess to me after having missed maybe just one week, sometimes just one week, and other times maybe they missed a couple. And they're like, Wow, it just doesn't feel right anymore. I just, I, and, it's, and, they're, and they're shocked because there was a time they didn't want to go at all. And then they started going and they had to kind of make themselves go. But then somehow there's a rhythm that develops. And then if they break that rhythm, it's like, and they'll say things. Maybe you've said this. It's like my, it's my, my, my whole week's off. It just doesn't feel right. I mean, you know, everything's okay, but it just, just didn't feel good. It's a life rhythm. It's, it, it, this is part of the intention of God. The spiritual life rhythm of that weekly worship of honoring God on the Sabbath that, that we're, we're never, sisters and brothers, more than six days away from resetting and restarting. Thank God. Because things can get pretty bad. Even on Monday morning. But I'm like, well... I'm not, I'm not, no more than six days till we can just start all over. That's a good word. We need to remember it. I've shared this with you before. Sabbath is God's practical solution to our perpetual problem. Well, what is that? Well, we, we have a hard time, you and I, living in the present. We very quickly are on to the next thing. Now, sometimes as we get older, we get wiser. And some of us that are younger listen to those that are older and wiser. And they, start to, they tell us things like, slow down. Take, you need to enjoy this part of your life. Or you, they'll, they'll remind us. But, but, but life is that way. You just, you're always on to the next. The next weekend. The next trip. The next place, the next promotion, the next relationship. Some of us. 
Not me. Don't, get, don't misunderstand. <laughs> She's going to be here in a little bit. Goodness gracious. Had a whole row drop to their knees in the back. Start praying. <laughs> Help him, Jesus. <laughs> On to the next. You know what I mean, right? You relate to that. We become very quickly human doings. Always on to the next. I mean, part of it's wonderful and exciting and passionate. I mean, it's, but Sabbath, Sabbath is like, like the, the speed bump on the road you need to go faster on. You're trying to be a cut through and save some time. And it's like, oh, and you see the sign. I mean, you could go ahead and plow over it and, you know, but that's not going to do any good. You have to slow down. You have to slow down. There's a neighborhood there. They want you to slow down. There's kids playing. Slow down. There's people live here. Slow down. Sabbath does all that. Slow down. There's kids here. Sabbath speaks to us. Slow down. People live here. Slow down. Sabbath spits. Once a week. Just stop. Call a time out. Now, we get that on Sunday mornings, we do, especially the folks that are here, because most of us are, are already in that, to the rhythm of Sabbath. Some of us are better at it than others, but, but we're here. But, but a lot of times, there's a lot of folks outside of us, they don't understand this. And you talk to them about it, and they kind of get what I'm saying. They do. But, but then there's this problem. The problem is that they, there's like, well... I know, I know, I need a rest. I need, you know, or, or you know, the, 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 they're always putting Sabbath off until they're done. Well, how's that going to work? You're never done. In fact, Sabbath is the answer to that perpetual problem. There's always more work to do. There's always a next. We're never completely done. As a matter of fact, we got to quit thinking about Sabbath as resting from work. And I, I, think, I believe I shared this with you before about a year ago. Sabbath is more about working from rest. It's about reprioritizing. It's about understanding, no, I can't, I can't rest my work. I'm, I'll never be done. And so what needs to come first is the idea of Sabbath. Regardless of where I am, Sabbath comes. I hit the speed bump. And I, I do what I need to do, and then I work from it. And that reestablishes spiritual life rhythms that are so healthy and balanced. We become much more creative. Uh, we become much more uh, uh, energized and efficient. We become happier people. You know, when we, the idea of, of not resting from work, but working from rest, is kind of like tithing. Now, bear with me on this. So I don't want to guilt anybody this morning, but, but if you, for those of us that have started tithing, giving 10%, if you'll, if you'll just learn from us for just a second, because those of us that do that, we'll tell you, we couldn't do it, we could never tithe at the end of the month. We can, we, you can, even, if, even if you mean to, even if you really believe in it, even if you're really trying, you, never, you just never have enough money. What do you got to do? You got to do it first. You got to give that the 10% first or whatever your commitment is. I'd always suggest doing it first because you'll never give as much as you want to give. But certainly if you, if you want to practice the tithe, those of us that have developed that habit, that's what we had to do. We had to do it first. And then we put, hopefully put in some in savings, I hope. Then probably your mortgage and so on and so on. But until you do that, it's very difficult. And it's, Sabbath is the same way. It's got to come first. We've got to quit thinking of it as last. Think of it as first. It comes first. I mean, we've got to remember, from the standpoint of Genesis, God created human beings, and the first thing they experienced was Sabbath. It might have been at the end of what God was doing, but it's up first with what we should be doing. So important. Sabbath isn't the enemy to our work, it's its partner. We are much better at our work after we've rested and played and remembered what was most important about life. 
Sabbath were never more than six days away from stopping, resting, contemplating, and delighting. That's what Sabbath is about. That's what the life rhythm every week is, is no matter what our rest of the week is, is, is about, there should be one day where it's different. We should stop. I always think of snow days. Snow days during the school year. You get a snow day, it's great. It's like some sort of earthly Sabbath. Because whatever you had planned, you don't have it planned anymore. I mean, you know, games that night, basketball, football, whatever, you know, nope, no practice. What are we going to do? I don't know. Look at each other. <laughs> Which is the idea of Sabbath, Right? We're going to be in relationship. We're going to move away from our human doings that we tend to be and become once again human beings and be with one another. Laugh, and talk, and share meals, share jokes. Enjoy every good gift from above. Stop whatever the normal things are. Rest. Sometimes that means resting our minds, not our bodies. Sometimes some of us need to become, because most of the time we're not active. And so part of what we need on Sabbath is, is we especially do something with exercise or you know, go hiking or bike riding, with, hopefully with a friend or loved one. So we rest our minds. And some of us, of course, need to rest our bodies. And we contemplate. I mean, we miss so much out of life because we don't take time just to reflect and give thanks and think about what's really important, what really matters. And delight. I love that, delight. On Sabbath and through the Sabbath, we find, we seek, and then we find and we enjoy God's promises in the full light of day. So that we can remember and trust those same promises when it's dark. I'll say that again. In, in Sabbath and through the Sabbath, that practice, that life rhythm. We, and you know this. I'm saying things that many of you know, but, but I need you to help teach others because we've got tons of people that don't get this. They think they know everything they need to know about God. They've heard about Jesus. So they feel pretty sure that if they die, they'll go to heaven. They're good. And their life looks horrible. Because it's not a magic trip. God has given us the gift of the Sabbath. This isn't something to oppress us with. This is something to free us as human beings. And people need to know. It, it, it's the weekly practice of Sabbath, of coming together and doing things different, of resting, of delighting, contemplating in the Lord that gives us the ability to seek and trust and experience all the promises of God to feel part of this great redemption story and do so in the full light of the day. Because more often than not, darkness is coming. And we'll need to remember those promises then. Knowing that no matter how dark it gets, we're never more than six days away from another Sabbath. Sabbath keeps us looking forward. We can celebrate the past, but it's so important. We're always looking towards God's perfect future. Okay, the Sabbath always makes us reflect, reflect and give thanks, but then look ahead. To be, have kingdom eyes, to, to honestly seek thy will be done. Because it's holy time and holy space. In Sabbath keeping... God becomes powerfully present to us when before God may have seemed oblivious. And people need to know this. People need to know this because they believe in God, but they're not experiencing God. They assent to God, but God's missing in their life because they are not creating space for God to dwell. I mean, they just, I guess they just expect God to run over them like a truck or something. And you and I both know that's not, that's not the Holy Spirit. I mean, I mean, for most of us, most of the time, the Holy Spirit whispers. So we, we need time and space to come in to allow God to work for us to seek the Spirit, to, be, to let the Spirit do the, His work in our life. And as we do this and get into life rhythms of weekly worship and through oftentimes weekly worship, some of those other life rhythms 
of devotions and study and small groups and journaling and praying and giving and serving. God, who may have seemed oblivious, becomes powerfully present. We trust, finally, in the midst of all of our problems and pain, we are not alone. I mean, people believe that, but they can't experience it without surrendering to the Sabbath and the spiritual life rhythms that God has given to us. And they need you to tell them. They need you to tell them. And and here I'm really going to ask some of the folks that are older. But now if you've been in church any length of time at all and and people will will hear you, I I want to invite you to, to share. But I really... Younger generations needs, needs the older generations. We're, we younger folks, the, the, and I'll, I'll speak as the older end of the younger folks, we're confused. We're very confused about what's important. And we're deeply challenged. We have more options than we've ever had. We're more blessed than we've ever been. And we got everything pulling on us. Everybody in the world wants to be the first in our life or in our children's life. Whether they're in band or dance or 4-H or football or, you know, everything says it's got to be the top priority if they're going to be any good at it. And that's what our boss says, too, about our work or, you know. And, you you know, you got books and everything saying how much you got to, you know, we got to do everything. And and we we need folks that are older than us to be wise sages and 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 we don't don't preach at them now but when given the opportunity be honest with them and just calmly and gently tell them making sure you're in church and your family's in church is real important it's it's not about a law it's not about this way god works you're gonna feel god a lot more you're going to find God's hope a lot better. You're, you're going to experience the answers that you're seeing a lot more quickly and a lot more effectively. You really need, make it a priority. Maybe you can't be here all the time. But being here some is better than never. And being here more is better than what maybe you've been doing. I'll do what I can as a pastor, but I'm really asking because you've lived through it. You know there are people here. I believe many of you know exactly what I'm talking about. And in the name of Jesus, I commission you. As the Spirit so leads you, talk. Talk to the people in your life who will listen to you. And tell them how important it is for their sake. For their family. For their mental health. To allow the Sabbath and other spiritual life rhythms to work. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll close with this. I, I just want to tell you a couple more things. But Jake and I, I, I've always had different practices with each of my boys. My nightly practice with Jake, my littlest one, you know, because you, you know, try to, one, of the, one life rhythm is maybe like praying with your kids or praying with your spouse. So I just thought this one little example. It's interesting, I, I, even as a pastor, there was times I struggled with praying with Jake. And I won't go into why, but you can kind of figure out, little kids sometimes are really tough. And then it occurred to me, one day, to just start praying the Lord's Prayer with him every night. I mean, it works for that too, not just on Sunday morning. And he likes the Lord's Prayer. But he likes the 23rd Psalm even better. And my nine-year-old can say the 23rd Psalm by heart now. It's his favorite. And he looks forward to it every night. Now, I say other things to him, too. I also go over the Apostles' Creed with him. And we just kind of say, it's it's this rhythm. It's this ritual rhythm. And it's a blessing. These things that God has given us, all of his, we are his children. They are meant to be blessings. 
Yes, religious people have used them to oppress us. We all have known people that just really maybe beat us up with some of these things that were meant to be good gifts. But we're going to have to get over that and set that aside because the enemy is robbing us from wonderful things and robbing people we love from the wonderful peace and goodness that God intends all of us to have through these wonderful spiritual life rhythms. When these life spiritual rhythms are ignored, despite our belief in God, it's a sign that we're still really in charge. We may believe in God, but clearly we think we know what's best. We're running things in our life ourselves. I I invite you today, I invite you today um, to keep and honor the Sabbath and all these other spiritual rhythms that the Lord gives us. And maybe not keep it perfectly, but to take it more seriously. And to invite others in your life to take it more seriously. And not in a, you know, somber, religious, piety serious, but seriously in a way of believing that it's for our good. And in practicing these things that we're honestly trying to let God have our lives. Trusting that if we do so, we'll receive his shalom, his peace, his wholeness regardless of the chaos that is in our lives, regardless of the chaos that might be coming, his peace will dwell one week at a time. Keep the Sabbath day holy. Don't pursue your own interests on that day, but enjoy the Sabbath. And speak of it with delight as the Lord's holy day. Honor it in all you do on that day well if the choir would come up I'll close us in prayer God we thank you for your care as our shepherd we thank you that as sheep even though we at times wander away far from being a part of your flock and then wonder why why we feel so alone we thank you nonetheless that you come after us and that your intent as the good shepherd is not just to hold each and every sheep but your intent is to go after the ones that are outside the flock and bring them in that we might be together and so help us gather each and every week honoring you honoring the sabbath receiving every good intent you intend for us to have in it And Lord, I pray a special blessing now in the name of Jesus. Give us the right words to talk to many people in our lives who believe in you. Or at least they're okay with you. But yet they're not not crazy about coming to church. Help us to not preach at them or guilt them. But Lord, help us to be a witness and an inspiration and in a very loving and tender and encouraging way, consistently just invite them for their own sake, for their own peace of mind, for their good and the good of their family, to take the Sabbath and other spiritual life rhythms much more seriously. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all of God's people say, Amen.